Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1986 comedy sequel, Police Academy 3, Back in Training. Now, to me personally, this isn't as bad as people make it out to be. Uh, I think this is one of the better Police Academy sequels. I honestly liked it more than the second film. It's uh, once again directed by Jerry Paris, who directed... Uh, their first assignment and I think his direction in this is a step up from what he did in uh, the previous film it's less uneven when it comes to uh, the energy and the madcap nature that I associate with uh, the police academy films so it's more consistent when it comes to uh, having uh, scenes that are just very oddball and almost cartoonish in terms of the way that they're shot uh, with the slapstick and the various different shenanigans involving uh, the grads or the new recruits. And I also feel the way that he shot uh, the action-packed finale, which is this one extended uh, uh, chase involving jet skis and speedboats. I thought that was also shot in a way where it was genuinely exciting and and provided a fair amount of thrills and it's not a movie that okay has direction that's going to just completely blow you away but it's a police academy film that's that's not the kind of movie that you're expecting that kind of uh output from and what you're looking for is you know, a fair amount of consistency when it comes to the comedy and when it comes to the humor and the tone and, and everything. And, and I definitely do feel that for the most part, you get that with uh, Jerry Paris's uh, direction in uh, Back in Training. The screenplay is by Gene Quintano. And I like this script. I think it's a screenplay that has enough familiarity in terms of the characters, in terms of their uh, their different uh, personalities and, and uh, their quirks and their uh, quips and stuff like that. But with the addition of some new recruits uh, that feature some familiar faces like Zed and Sweet Chuck, as well as some uh, entirely new ones and Karen and... Um, uh, um, Tomoko and I like the conflict. I think the conflict, uh, with, uh, the story is actually pretty compelling for a comedy. It creates some, uh, nice, uh, moments, uh, uh, between, uh, the two warring uh, police academies I think it is a good idea to have Lassard's Academy get involved in some sort of competition uh, with Mauser's Academy. And so the two are pitted against one another in a different way than just the usual fair, like Mauser just kind of being Officer Harris. Uh, but here, it seems like he's able to uh, really step into his own a little bit more. Uh, and the scenes with him and Proctor are written very well. And I just like a lot of the dynamic still between the main uh, Police Academy grads. And I like that they have a fair amount of things to do throughout the majority of the movie. It's not one of those uh, uh, stories and scripts where the grads are just kind of sitting around twiddling their thumbs at times or, or some of the grads are uh, involved in the plot, but other ones aren't. Like it, it's, it's not one of those instances. And I like that the grads were also involved in the training of the new recruits. Uh, I, I felt that that was a nice um, transition and evolution of their characters. And 
I enjoyed uh, the callbacks to the Blue Oyster uh, uh, bar. And um, you also had a, a callback to the same um, uh, thug who uh, took Harris hostage uh, in the first movie. He's involved uh, and is a part of the gang that takes the mayor. And I like that Lassard gets involved in, in the finale as well and, and, and shows his, uh, his capability when it comes to being involved in a, um, action scenario. He actually shows he can kick some butt. I thought that was fun. And it's always fun to see Brian Tochi. And even though his character in a lot of ways is kind of, it is very uh, um, heavy on racial stereotypes. It still was something that I didn't mind, and and I I had some fun with uh, because of Brian Tochi, and it was also just really enjoyable to see him uh, work alongside uh, Michael Winslow, and I thought it was fun too that uh, uh, his character uh, got to uh, be with. Uh, Leslie Easterbrook's uh, Callahan. I thought that was a fun, uh, different sort of dynamic between the two, and I thought that they made a made a pretty charming couple. And you also have, you know, the prostitute from the first movie. She also makes another appearance. So there's some nice, uh, entertaining, and just. Uh, Pretty solid uh, callbacks to uh, the first film. And I liked how uh, Zed and Sweet Chuck, they have this very antagonistic uh, uh, connection with one another. And I, I really enjoy how it builds throughout the movie. You can definitely see that uh, Bobcat and uh, Tim were good friends because you could just see that chemistry on screen when it comes to the scenes between the two of them. And yeah, there's just a, a lot of, you know, nice moments for the characters and, and the new recruits weren't really, you know, annoying or obnoxious or anything. And they didn't take center stage either, which, you know, was nice to see. And you had a really, a uh, fun, uh, action-packed uh, climax with a uh, genuinely uh, thrilling uh, uh, chase. So, yeah, I, I, I think this one's a gem. I think this one, I, I mean, I'm not going to say that it's great, but I, I think it's a minor gem, to be fair. Um, it, it's not quite, you know, 18 karat whatever. You know, it's not, it's not something like that. You know, it's... It's not, uh, you know, a comedy gem for the ages, but, you know, it's a minor gem uh, in the genre, especially when it comes to these kind of films and for a comedy that's rated PG. I feel like the PG rating, it didn't necessarily hurt this film too much compared to some of the other uh, sequels in the series. Then you have the cast, and it's still a really... A uh, solid and uh, genuinely special cast for uh, a a film uh, like this, a lighthearted comedy. Uh, the main players are all back here. Steve Gutenberg is back as Mahoney. Bubba Smith is back as Hightower. You got David Graff as Tackleberry. Michael Winslow as Jones. Uh, e Leslie Easterbrook returns as Callahan which was really nice to see. She apparently wasn't able to do the, the second film because she was pregnant during the time that they were going to shoot it. Uh, so it's definitely a welcome return to the franchise in more ways than one. Uh, Marion Ramsey is Hooks. Bruce Mahler is Fackler, kind of. George Gaines, definitely, though, is Eric Lassard. And the return of Scott Thompson and, and Brand Von Hoffman as Copeland and Blanks, who are now working uh, with Mauser to try to uh, 
sabotage uh, Lassard's uh, academy. And, I mean, everyone involved here uh, steps into their roles with ease and the chemistry that was present uh, with all of them in the first two films is still here. And these characters are just so charismatic and charming and genuinely likable. And uh, the new uh, cadets, the new recruits, uh, some are familiar faces and Tim Kazarinsky uh, from uh, the uh, second movie, Sweet Chuck and Bobcat Goldthwait is Zed. Uh, but you have some new recruits and uh, Deborah Lee Scott, who isn't technically a new face either because she is the wife of Fackler. Um, but now she's um, joining the police academy and that leads to a f that led to a fun uh, twist on the gag featuring the two of them in the first movie where the roles are reversed this time around and it's Fackler trying to stop her from going to the police academy uh Brian Tochi as Tomoko uh and uh Sean Weatherly as uh, Karen there's some other ones there's uh, Andrew Paris, who plays a cadet named Bud, um, who I believe he's the 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 son of the boxing guy, you know, the the father of uh, of uh, Tackleberry's wife. They repeat that gag again, which that didn't do anything for me, but that's just me personally. Um, but nothing against the actor who played that character. Uh, David Hubbin played Hedges, and Marshall Watkins played uh, Sarah. And he had Mauser's cadets. Uh, one of them was actually J David James Elliott, who would go on to star in uh, Jag. Uh, so that's a fun bit of trivia there. And that's really it for like the main uh, cast. I mean, Doug Lennox comes back as the main villain, like the thug from uh, uh, the the first movie. Um, Georgina Spelvin is back as the hooker. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 a good cast. Uh, it uh, everyone seems to complement each other uh, equally as well as they did previously. Um, of course, you also have Art Matrano who returns as Mauser and Lance Kinsey as Proctor, and the two of them still have really a good uh, uh, chemistry and have a good dynamic with one another and rapport. And it really has gotten to the point where it's almost like, I don't know if fraternity is the right word to use, but family definitely is, is the kind of vibe you get from uh, the cast at this point. It doesn't necessarily even seem like oh, it's just a, a group of uh, actors who are just doing another job. It seems like it's a group of friends. It, it is this kind of this family atmosphere and mood that just makes things all the more endearing when it comes to uh, the film itself. And the other technical merits, they're there, like the cinematography by Robert Sad and the editing by Bud Mullen. And Robert Folk does the score again, but a lot of it's just recycled cues from the first film. But it fits for, you know, what uh, uh, the uh, film was trying to do in a, in a given scene. And it's not that long. It's only 83 minutes. Uh, so it definitely isn't one of those movies that I would consider to be boring or uh, that tedious. Uh, I, I would say, yeah, I would definitely recommend it if you are a fan of the first two. Uh, I think you'll definitely get uh, some enjoyment out of this one. But anyway, thanks for watching my review of Police Academy 3 back in training. And until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.